Okay, at this point, I want to introduce some of the concepts that Meyer uses for his footwork, what he calls stepping, uh, in his text. So we'll have it later for when we get into the drills that we put into this. So the first thing is we've already established that our balance point, nice loose knees, we're on the balls of our feet, uh, we've got most of our balance forwards in, in any of our guards. And then as we move, we're just going to move our feet from ball of foot to ball of foot, stepping quickly on from pad to pad. We don't want to be clumping around with big, large steps or moving fully. The main thing to note about Meyer's stepping actions is that he calls this a single step. You notice that I moved both feet in my single step. So this is not actually a step because it doesn't actually put me in the right position against my opponent. It hasn't actually moved my body where it needs to go. A single step is going to take my whole body and move it from one place to another. A double step is going to be an action that moves essentially three feet, so or three foot steps. I take one step, then another step with my left foot, and then another step with my right foot, and that's a double step. And that can be used primarily if you want a defensive action followed by an attacking action. That can be fairly easy where you move offline and then forwards attacking your opponent with a double step. So you move a double step out of the way. You can go forwards with those steps, you can go diagonally with those steps, or you can even traverse diagonally forwards and to the left, moving your right foot and then your left foot. All those things are, are viable options. Um, occasionally what we might end up doing also is stepping out with the left foot and then following with the right foot. And those are for actions where you're clearing distance that way and creating a new line of attack coming in from your left hand side. Those are pretty much it. It doesn't get all that much more complicated with stepping. Just don't overcommit to your steps. You don't want to be making very large steps. You want to be able to transition your steps from one foot to the other and even stop a step short so that you can change your actions midway through. Those are all very important things to be able to do in your football. Just very quickly on gripping the sword, some important things when, especially in Meyer, but pretty much applies across all sword fighting, is you don't want to over grip your sword. I see a lot of people using like a hammer grip on their sword and this really interferes with your ability to control your sword and create strength with your sword. What you really want is a nice loose grip with the weapon. You don't want it to be too tight. You want it to be relaxed and loose. You should feel like you are able to essentially cut a stake with your sword uh, as, as you'd hold a knife, not like you would hold a hammer or a club. So you want to hold it nice and loosely and what this will allow you to do is not only create nice good strength with a bit of a squeeze, but also it'll shift your grip a little bit as you need to and when you come into some of these winding actions and like the guard of ox or even when you have to wind and turn your hand all the way over, right? those actions will be much easier if you have a loose grip. So eventually what we're going to do in this uh, in the drill is we're going to actually turn our hand from uh, from a position here all the way over this way and you can see that the sword is sitting on top of my thumb my hand is nice and loose and it's gripping the sword it's now pretty flat in the opposite direction right and so we eventually want to be able to use our sword like this, having a loose grip is really going to be able to help out on those winding actions. Okay, now we're going to get into the cuts and thrusts that Meyer uh, presents to us for our system. Yeah, they're all very traditional German cuts, if you're familiar with other German technique from uh, Lichtenau or uh, Ringak or wherever, uh, you'll probably see some very similar uh, concepts and names at play here. So in order to help me out, I'm going to welcome in uh, my partner, Eric Lanham. Say hi, Eric. Hello. And uh, he's going to act as my wonderful punching dummy. So uh, I'll try not to hit you too hard. Uh, we're going to lay out the basics of Meyer's uh, cutting system to start. 
And the first cut that Meyer gives us as our primary cut is the Oberhau, or the high cut. The high cut comes down and descends in a vertical line. It's not all that uncomplicated. It just strikes straight down. But for his rapier system, he lays out that the high cut can be thrown in three different angles. The first is vertically through your opponent's head, right? Just straight down through their head, travels out below. That's the first cut. The second runs through his right shoulder, and the third runs through his left shoulder. Now keep in mind that these are downward strokes. They are vertical strokes. They're not diagonal cuts into the shoulders, but they're downward cuts into the shoulders. And those he generally refers to as suppressing cuts. So the first overhaul, the first high cut, is really good at striking your opponent in the head. It's very good at getting a lot of range and a lot of reach, but it's not very good necessarily at defending yourself from anything that might be coming in towards the side. So if I have an opponent who is attacking me in one fashion or another, either with a cut or a thrust, right, whatever it is, if I throw it straight for his head, I run the risk of getting struck myself. So by taking that vertical blow and sending it down through his shoulder, I use that as a suppressing blow against him. So there's my downward cut on the right, or on his right, which would be my left, and my downward cut on his left, which would be his right. And those suppress his blow, whether it's a cut or a thrust, if he gives me thrusts, I can suppress the thrust with a straight downward cut. It becomes very strong and a very stable defensive action. Um, those are the overhouse, the high cuts. Uh, after the high cuts, he gets us the diagonal cuts, which are often called the Zorn House or the Wrathful Cuts. The Wrathful Cuts are being thrown uh, in diagonal angles towards my opponent, so a diagonal cut would look like that. The first of the diagonal cuts would travel through my opponent's shoulder and pretty much out the underarm. And he calls that the shoulder cut, so if I strike there, that's where my first cut wants to go. That's the height of the shoulder cut. If I want to cut him in the second cut, which starts at the ribs and travels out the hip, there's a diagonal blow to his belly, right? And if I want to strike him with a diagonal cut to the leg or the leg cut, then I would strike downward and diagonally to the leg. There's a diagonal cut to the leg. So you have the three different heights, essentially, of the diagonal blows. You have the shoulder blow, the belly cut, and the leg cut. Three different heights. Those travel on both sides, or both angles of cutting, so I can cut from the right, or I can cut all those cuts from the left. All those cuts from the left. Right, left, doesn't really matter. Uh, they're all pretty much the same thing. He'll say, this one's from the right, this one's from the left, and then you can cover both sides of your sword. Uh, the interesting thing about the diagonal blows, while well, he also calls them the Zornhau, the wrathful cut, he will also sometimes refer to the exact same cut as a defense stroke. So you can use your, def your Zornhau very defensively because uh, it covers all of your body as you strike through it. So if I ever run into a problem where I'm out of position and don't know what to do and my opponent is attacking me, I can cut a defense stroke and that will cover a lot of area as I'm throwing my blow, and it will defend me as I go through, because they're very strong, powerful cuts that cut all the way across the body. You can even throw back-to-back -back a defense stroke into a wrathful stroke, and it becomes a very good opportunity to open up your opponent and find an opportunity to strike them. As they strike at you, there's a defense stroke followed by a wrath stroke, or on the different sides of the sword. So the defense stroke followed by a wrath stroke. Right? depending on what your time and opportunity for striking your opponent is. Um, those are the downward diagonal blows. Then you would have the upward diagonal blows, which he calls low cuts. The low cuts come from down and travel out the high, right? So a low cut would travel up the same angle from both sides. You have the shoulder cut, the belly cut, and the leg cut. Right? All of those are diagonal blows. The only difference between the Zornhau, the Wrathful Cut, and the Low Cut is that one travels downward, one travels upward, but they come through the same angles. So you have 
your downward diagonal, upward diagonal, all of those together. And the final blows, final cuts that he shows us are the horizontal cuts, what he calls middle cuts. These travel at a horizontal plane. The first one travels through the neck of your opponent, that's called the neck cut. The second travels through the belly, which he calls the belt cut, makes a horizontal line across the, the belly, it's a belt. And the third is the foot cut, which actually travels through about your opponent's knee, or just below their knee, right, in a horizontal pattern, and they come from both sides. So neck cut, belt cut, foot cut, from both sides, right? There you have it, and those obviously, looking at you, they look like that. Neck cut, belt cut, foot cut. Those are your primary cuts that he has. They travel, like we said, we've shown them from all the different sides and all the different angles. Um, afterwards, he gives us essentially three thrusts. Uh, you have the high thrust, which is aimed at your opponent's face. And we you go back to the guards. You already know that long point is the end of every thrust. So all I'm going to do is transition from a middle guard into long point and thrust in my opponent's face. And this is the high thrust. If I thrust at his midsection, that is the middle thrust. And if I thrust lower than that at the groin, uh, that is the low thrust. The one thing to note about uh, Meyer's thrust is he's fairly specific in this instance that he says that at whatever height you thrust at, that's the height your shoulder should be in the thrust. So if I'm thrusting a low thrust at my opponent, I don't want to lower my point and keep my head high because this will provide an opportunity for my opponent to strike me without my defense in the way. I want to make sure that when I thrust, I keep my shoulder at the level of that thrust, though that, even if he tries to attack me, my guard is in the way of his counter. So I can thrust in the high line. If I thrust in the middle line, I want to make sure that I'm low enough that I'm covered with my sword. And if I thrust to the groin, I want to make sure that I'm even lower. And then I'm covered with my sword. And you can do these thrusts either with the true edge down or the long edge, as the Germans would call it, downward like I just showed, or with the long edge up. So here, against a high blow, which I wouldn't necessarily, but if he were to come in at me from the left, from the from his left hand side, then I could create opportunity here with the high thrust. Right? If I'm going for a, a middle thrust, I might want to cover my head behind my sword. Certainly, I find that when I'm going for the low thrust, you really want to get as much coverage in front of you as possible, having your having your guard up and uh, your knuckles up also helps out on that account. That's pretty much the fundamentals of any attack that you're going to throw is going to be kind of one of those or a variant on those. There's more you can do. Uh, after you grab, you know, when you get into closures and windings and things like that. But this is sort of the fundamentals of his attacking system.